I will first discuss about interfacial biosensing, which will include uh, DNA gold affinity, protein gold affinity, and then I'll talk about cancer biomarkers and, uh, for example, DNA methylation and protein phosphorylation, and we'll show the method we developed to detect these biomarkers, and then I will uh, introduce you to a, a, a new interfacial biosensing uh, method, which we termed as interfacial analytics. Well, uh, so let's start with into what is interfacial biosensing, which is briefly uh, involves interaction of metal with biomolecules. So previously people thought that interaction of metal or such as gold with biomolecules um, is very non-specific and it is not possible to detect uh, any disease signatures by using this interaction. So that's why they developed a, a different kinds of uh, uh, method which involves surface functionalization. For example, for DNA biosensing, uh, they, they used um, uh, surface functionalization of a single stranded DNA by modifying the DNA with the tile. And then uh, once, the fun, well, once the single stranded DNA is functionalized in an upright conformation, then the target DNA is usually passed to the sensor surface, which uh, then binds with the uh, functionalized DNA. So if there is a, um, a binding, it's a positive signal. If there is no binding, you get a negative signal. Similarly, for the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, for protein detection as well, they use like, typically it is used uh, functionalization of the surface using biotech BSA that that um, connects with the streptomidin that streptomidin binds the, uh, your uh, biotinoted antibody and these biotinoted antibody then uh, capture your target antigen. Now the problem with these type of typical biosensing method is that this is the this functionalization process takes a really long time. And so this is a time consuming process and one of the major drawbacks of these sensing platforms are non-specific absorption of your target molecules towards the non, uh, towards the sensor surface that creates significant amount of false positive signals. So to avoid these limitations, we actually uh, develop the interfacial biosensing techniques. So which investigates the interaction behavior of biomolecules such as protein, RNA, DNA with the bare metal interface and detect disease associated biomolecules through this interaction in comparison to your normal standard. Now, main advantages of these um, uh, interfacial biosensing technique is that it has no sensor surface functionalization. It is rapid because you don't need to functionalize your surface and it's level free. So, how do we detect that? We know that during disease progression, uh, biomolecules undergo changes in their molecular structure and the three dimensional conformation. And that's why these biomolecules carry disease signatures and that's why they, are, they, they have different physical chemical properties and that's why they got a different absorption of uh, towards the gold surface. For example, normal DNA uh, gets a different absorption behavior to, uh, than the cancer DNA or aberrant DNA. This is the same for protein as well. You can have uh, different uh, biomolecular absorption properties for uh, normal than the cancer DNA. So how does it work that the affinity of biomolecules with the gold? The, for DNA, DNA absorption of gold is mainly dependent on the base composition. So we know that DNA has four different bases. For example, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine, and they have affinity towards gold surface through their nitrogen and oxygen containing functional groups. And it has been found that uh, adenine has the highest affinity towards the gold surface in comparison to the other bases, for example, cytosine, which has a higher affinity than guanine and thymine. And for protein also, absorption on gold is mediated by pile or nitrogen and oxygen containing functional groups of amino acids. So these type of functional groups actually provide the affinity of biomolecules towards the gold surface. And if you, if you look at these references, you can find more uh, about this affinity mechanism. However, we use this affinity mechanism to detect cancer biomarkers. So how cancer detection works, we all know that 
Um, cancer is a disease that involves uncontrolled growth of cell. And if you can detect early, you can significantly reduce the mortality barrier. Now, current cancer detection techniques is usually involves a standard biopsy, which is a time intensive procedure, it includes local assembling of tissue, it involves pain and risk, most importantly, is invasive. In case of liquid biopsy, so everyone is looking for a liquid biopsy test for cancer, which is quick, uh, which will be comprehensive tissue profile. And which will uh, have, which will be easily obtained, involve minimal pain or risk, and which should be minimally invasive. Now, how can we um, have a liquid biopsy test? We know that um, body fluids, like our body fluids or liquid biopsy, contains biomolecules, for example, cells, protein, DNA, RNA, and exosomes. And during cancer progressions, these biomolecules undergo apparent changes in their molecular sequence structure and conformation. And these molecules are available in body fluids. So by analyzing these molecular signatures during cancer progression, we can actually develop a liquid biopsy test. So for our interfacial biosensing technique, uh, using our interfacial biosensing technique to develop a liquid biopsy test, we selected two, uh, two different biomarkers. One is based on DNA, which is uh, DNA methylation, because DNA experience aberrant methylation level and pattern in cancer. And the other one is protein-based uh, biomarker, which is a protein phosphorylation. Also, it has been found that protein experience aberrant uh, phosphorylation in cancer. And these aberrant phosphorylation, these, are, these aberrant changes uh, can actually impact their intrinsic physical chemical properties of these biomolecules, and such as absorption behavior towards gold surface. So that's why we use these features to develop our techniques. So let's have some background on, the, on these two biomarkers. So DNA methylation is one of the major epigenetic modifications uh, which involves addition of a methyl group at the five position of cytosine. And DNA methylation actually can act as a switch to regulate gene expression process. For example, if you have a normal gene, a normal genome, the regulatory region is usually unmethylated, which means the switch is on for gene expression process. But, and at the same time, if that regulatory region is methylated, which means switch is off for gene expression process. So now, this, every cell decides which, which region should be switched on and which region should be switched off based on its normal cellular function. But this function can go abnormal when this is these regulatory regions which are needed to be switched off is switched off by abnormal methylation. And that can create abnormal function into the cells, such as abnormal proliferation, and that can lead to the cancer. So that's why DNA methylation can serve as a cancer biomarker. And the same as protein phosphorylation as well. Protein phosphorylation is also a reversible process, and cells use this process to regulate their func cellular functions. For example, it says uh, whenever it, it requires, it goes to phosphorylation of protein in presence of a, or by the action of a protein kinase enzyme, and it goes to dephosphorylate itself by the action of a phosphatase enzyme. So this is like a reversible process cells use. And usually in a, in a cell, the, uh, uh, usually how it works, a receptor protein is stimulated by a growth factor ligand, as you can see here. And this stimulation causes the phosphorylation of these uh, membrane protein of the cell in presence of ATP and protein kinase enzymes. So once this uh, uh, receptor protein is phosphorylated, it, uh, it starts the phosphorylation chain reaction in, in the, in, in, inside the cell, which phosphorylates the downstream proteins and finally the terminal when the terminal proteins become phosphorylated it enters into the nucleus and phosphorylates the transcription factor which then regulates the gene expression process and this is a normal process in, in the in cell to regulate the uh, uh, to you know operate the molecular uh, dogma of the cell but this process abnormal phosphorylation can happen and then everything can go abnormal inside the cell, which can involve cellular abnormal cellular proliferation and anti-apoptotic behaviors, 
and finally it can lead to cancer. So that's why protein phosphorylation can also be act as a cancer biomarkers. Now we use these two biomarkers and, and, we, and we, we used our interfacial biosensing method to detect these biomarkers. First, the current, you know, we know that current biosensing assays are, the, for example, current gold standard for detecting this type of uh, phosphorylation and uh, DNA methylation involves DNA sequencing machine or mass spectrometry, which is expensive, time consuming, and tedious. So, we wanted to develop an inexpensive rapid and plug and play method using our artificial biosensing technique. So we start with DNA methylation. So we thought that let's start with a simple uh, technique which can avoid the, the problem or limitations of current biosensing techniques. For example, the functionalization of the surface, time consuming uh, procedure, and also the expensive instruments to avoid the, all of these things. We uh, developed a technique which we termed as methyl salt which involves the extraction of DNA from cell and then if the cell is methylated, you got a C, methylated C in your sequence. If it is unmethylated, you got an unmethylated cytosine in your sequence. So then we perform the bisulfide conversion of the DNA and then if the methylated, uh, after bisulfide con con conversion, the methylated C, C cytosine remains uh, cytosine, however, the unmethylated cytosine converted to EOC. And this is very common. I mean, this is the usual procedure. We separate uh, methylated and unmethylated sequence. But what we have done, we did an asymmetric PCR after that to um, generate single stranded DNA, which then created a GC rich sequence in case of methylated DNA and an AC or any cytosine rich sequence in case of unmethylated DNA. And as I said before, DNA gold affinity trend actually follows editing with the highest affinity towards the gold surface. The unmethylated DNA absorb more towards the gold surface in comparison to the methylated DNA. And based on these different absorption behavior, we can detect uh, unmethylated DNA and methylated DNA. So we, we, we detected this absorption difference using surface plasma resonance uh, uh, surface plasma resonance biosensor because surface plasma resonance involves changing the um, uh, refractive index based on the mass change on the surface. So you got more mass change, more mass on the surface, you got a higher signal. So that's why you got a higher signal for unmethylated DNA and there's less absorption for methylated DNA, so you got a less signal for methylated DNA. In, we also have, we also detected these changes with electrochemistry. Well, electrochemistry works if there is a more surface area, you've got more current. So in case of, uh, in case of our, uh, unmethylated DNA, there are more DNA onto the surface, which blocks the surface area of the gold, and you've got a less current in comparison to the methylated uh, DNA. So that's how we can differentiate methylated and unmethylated DNA using a simple uh, gold DNA affinity method. And then, uh, I mean, using SPR, we found that when we spiked our methylated DNA into an um, unmethylated uh, DNA sample, we found that our method can detect 25% methylation in presence of 75% unmethylated DNA. In case of electrochemistry, we performed, we, did, uh, we tried many different techniques. For example, we tried uh, regular uh, rod shaped. Uh, uh, regular electrodes, we tried, we used screen printed electrodes and also we used um, a multiplex micro electrode platform. And using these type of platforms, we found that we improved the sensitivity and we found that we can detect 10% methylation in presence of a 90% unmethylated DNA. And also, we have seen that we can actually detect single CPC sites. Uh, in, uh, in, in a uh, synthetic uh, DNA system. So we published these works in many, uh, in, in, in different uh, channels. You can have a look if you would like to get more information of these methods, how does it work. And then finally, because we know that these methods are good because they, they avoided some limitations of um, uh, in a current biosensing system because they are cheap, 
the no functionalization, no problem with the uh, false positive signal because of the non-specific uh, absorption. So these, these, these methods are good, but these methods are still requires, as you can see in the previous slides, these methods are still requires these uh, uh, sample processing of your DNA. So that's actually inhibits our uh, you know, dream to develop a lipid biopsy test which would be really fast and doesn't require all these bisulfate conversion and, uh, and polymerase chain reaction. So to, to achieve this actually goal, we developed a new uh, interfacial biosensing method which we termed as metal scale. Uh, this is a 10 minute uh, test that can uh, detect many cancer types uh, with a minute. So, so how does it work? As you can see here, in this case, like we uh, just uh, used a, a black ball to represent the cytosine and a red ball to represent the methylatocytosine. And how the methylscape biomarker works, we know that in, in normal genome, the regulatory regions, as I said before, regulatory regions are usually unmethylated to switch on the gene expression process. However, in case of normal genome, the intergenic or long genomic regions are densely methylated. So normal genome actually has very high methylation levels in their sequence. In case of cancer, a significant epigenetic reprogramming occurs. And what happens, these regulatory regions become clustered methylated, so the gene expression process becomes abnormal, but the long intergenic regions, so long genomic regions, become significantly demethylated. So there is a significant changes in the methylation level and pattern during cancer. So what we have seen, so these, these changes we termed as metal scale biomarker. And what we have seen, we discovered a unique DNA nanosignatures based on these changes. And we found that normal DNA, when we add this normal DNA to an echo solution, this DNA creates larger aggregates to an in echo solution, whereas cancer DNA are more dispersed. In the, in the surface, and they, are, they create narrow aggregates. So this is probably because, um, this is probably because, um, you know, that normal DNA are densely methylated, and as a result, these uh, methylation, these methyl groups are actually hydrophobic. And that's why we thought that, uh, I mean, this, this hydrophobicity, because normal DNAs are really, really highly uh, methylated. So the hydrophobic methyl groups makes this normal DNA highly hydrophobic. And that's why when they are, they are in the water, they create aggregates. But in case of cancer DNA, they are less hydrophobic. So that's why they are more dispersed in solution. And we also discovered that this difference in the solvation behaviors can actually influence their surface-based properties as well. And we found that normal DNA has low absorption towards the bone surface in comparison to the cancer DNA. And as you can see that, and this is probably because this, the, in case of normal DNA, the high affinity groups, the high affinity groups of DNA are blocked inside these aggregates. In case of cancer DNA, they're more dispersed in solution, so they have more opportunities to interact with the bone surface. So based on these different absorption behavior of normal and cancer DNA, we developed our 10 minute test. So how the test works, the, so you have the extracted DNA from blood or biopsy tissues, you directly absorb this DNA onto the gold electrodes without any sample processing, for example, bisulfur treatment, or uh, PCR amplification, and then you measure the current. Then, because as I said before, the normal DNA has less absorption, it gives higher signal because there are more surface area to generate the current. In case of cancer DNA, there are more absorption towards the whole surface, it was less signal. So based on this difference, you can easily detect cancer normal DNA. We developed another naked eye detection technique based on bold nanoparticles where we added the DNA into the gold nanoparticle solution and then incubated it for five minutes. These, because the, norm, because the cancer DNA has more affinity towards the nanoparticles of the surface, it provides an extra stability 
towards the nanoparticles, and that's why when we added one microliter of salt into this solution, it retains the color of the, the pink color of the solution. However, in case of normal DNA, because there are less absorption towards the gold nanoparticles of the DNA, there is no extra stability for the nanoparticles, and when we add a salt, it turns the color to blue or colorless, and we can detect it easily by naked eye. So this is the simple method we develop. And if you look at our data, for electrochemistry data, we tested our method for tissue-derived genomic DNA, and we tested 72 uh, cancer tissue-derived genomic DNA, 31 normal tissue-derived genomic DNA, and we found that our method can uh, provide 90% accuracy in differentiating normal and cancer DNA. And also, in case of, to, to, pro, to, you know, to achieve our goal of developing a liquid biopsy test, we used our method for breast and colorectal cancer plasma derived CFD samples. Okay, so, and then we found that actually our method, our middle scale technique can actually detect um, cancer derived plasma CFD uh, with 88% accuracy. So for our nanoparticle-based uh, method, we also tested tissue-derived DNA. Uh, we identified cancer genomic DNA with 76% accuracy, and we identified um, using our liquid biopsy test, identified the plasma cancer plasma CF DNA with 78% accuracy. So, so this is the uh, metal scale method. So we thought that while we have tested our um, can, in genomic DNA, we have tested CF DNA and we found that our method can actually accurately detect the cancer specific DNAs. So we thought that, whoa, I mean, can we actually try the EV derived DNA as well? Like we know that the, recently there are some publications that, um, uh, there are some publications that, like uh, circulating um, uh, extracellular vesicles actually carry. DNA as well. So we thought that probably we, our method can be able to uh, detect this ev derived DNA as well. So what we did in this paper, uh, just published in Nanoscale Horizon, uh, so we, we took a patient serum, we isolated the EVs and uh, pure EVs we isolated uh, from the serum and then we extracted uh, the EV DNA uh, from the EVs. Uh, uh, and and then we absorb this DNA to the whole surface. This is, I mean, in this case, we used a microelectro system, probably because, I mean, this is because the, the concentration of EV DNA is very, very low. So we really need a high sensitive surface, and we developed a high sensitive surface to detect this EV DNA. As you can see, we can actually identify normal and patient EV DNA using this technique. And we tested this method. Um, in cell line samples, in comparison with uh, unmethylated DNA, normal tissue derived DNA, and cancer cell line derived EV DNA, normal cell line derived EV DNA. And as you can see, that EV derived DNA gives similar, uh, cancer cell line derived EV DNA gives similar um, uh, absorption signal in comparison to the cancer cell line genomic DNA. So we tested a few, a few patient samples. Uh, using the same procedure, few patient serum we tested, and few uh, and some serum we tested from normal individuals, and we found that our method can actually identify extracellular vascular DNA, cancer derived extracellular vascular DNA in comparison to the normal EV DNA. So finally, I I'd like to introduce you to the uh, 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 the interfacial nanomixing system, which is. Uh, which is our uh, improved version of the interfacial biosensing system, uh, where we used an uh, alternating current electrohydrodynamics to actually significantly enhance the biomolecular absorption. So in this case, you know, in, in our previous cases, we, we used actually uh, the static incubation, or probably only used the shaker to, you know, agitate the samples to. Uh, so that there is more and more absorption towards the gold surface. But in, in this case, to increase the absorption of biomolecules towards the sensor surface, in this case we used alternative current electrohydrodynamics. So when we apply the potential to, so this is a multiplex um, electrode system, and each electrode contains a smaller uh, outer electrode and a larger uh, inner electrode. 
So when we apply your alternative uh, potentially to these uh, electrodes, a electrical double layer generates at the nanoscale level of the of the surface, and this this creates actually non-uniform forces, and which is larger. These non-uniform forces is larger as you can see. There are more charges onto the large electrodes, and there are less force onto the uh, smaller electrodes. And because of these non-uniform forces, it creates the fluid flow. When you have your sample solution on top of these electrodes, and you apply and uh, and uh, electronic potential, it then creates a fluid flow from larger electrode towards the smaller electrode. Uh, uh, I mean, from the smaller electrode towards the larger electrode. So it's like a vortex-like mixing you create inside the electrode surface. And, and because of this vortex-like uh, motion, you have more interaction of your biomolecules towards the gold surface in comparison uh, to the static incubation system. So using this nanomixing, we just, so as you can see here, there are more protein phosphorylated protein absorbed onto the gold surface in comparison to the non-phosphorylated one. <clears throat> so we tested this with, um, for detecting protein phosphorylation and also detecting DNA methylation. So in case of DNA methylation, for in case of DNA, we have seen that our static incubation takes almost like 60 minutes to reach the saturation to reach the saturation but in case of uh, but in case of uh, uh, nano mixing system it only takes three minutes to reach the saturation and we found that not only that it is rapid we, we, we got the signal a higher very significantly higher signal in three minutes we also can actually reduce the our detection limit I mean in the, so the limit of detection has been increased are from 5 nanograms to 0.5 nanograms per microliter. And also, not only that, we have increased the sensitivity. So as you can see that the difference between, the signal difference between methylated and unmethylated DNA was 16% in case of static incubation system. However, in nanomixing system, it increased up to 29%. So in case of protein phosphorylation detection, we also have we also did the same. Without nanomixing, it takes a long time to get the, and still we couldn't get a very high signal. But in case of nanomixing, it took only three minutes to go to get a very high signal. And also, we, we uh, uh, the limit of detection increased, which uh, went to 0.2 nanograms per microliter, and the difference increased between phosphorylated EGFR and non phosphorylated EGFR increased from 18% to 31%. So we can actually clearly detect EGFR, um, uh, phosphorylated EGFR from the uh, non-phosphorylated EGFR using our interfacial nanomixing system. So finally, uh, in summary, I have introduced uh, simple electrochemical uh, interfacial biosensing methods for the detection of cancer biomarkers such as DNA methylation and protein phosphorylation. And it avoids these interfacial biosensing system it avoids um, uh, general paradigm of biosensing fabrication states, for example, surface functionalization, and also uh, also also methylzor provides level free detection of ten percent heterogeneous methylation uh, in synthetic and cell line DNA samples and uh, detection of protein phosphorylation from as low as 0.2 nanograms per microliter of sample. Uh, interfacial nanomixing platform, platform can provide rapid multiplex detection in just three minutes. And uh, Metalscape is a promising liquid biopsy test for scanning many cancer types at the early stage, suitable for POC type rapid detection and multiplexing. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge all the authors in the papers that we have published in the last five years and developed these interfacial, pioneered these interfacial biosensing methods and also the funding agencies, uh, for example, National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia, Australian Research Council, National Breast Cancer Foundation of Australia, University of Queensland and Australian National Fabrication Institute.